This video is being sponsored by Minwax, offering a wide variety of wood stains, finishes, conditioners, fillers, and more for your woodworking projects. Learn more about their products at minwax.com. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. Traditionally, a sideboard is a long piece of furniture used for serving food, specifically in dining rooms. Sideboards typically have a long top for placing serving dishes, and cabinet doors with shelves, or drawers, for storing dishes, cutlery, and linens. Currently, the terms sideboard, buffet, and credenza are often used interchangeably. However, the distinctions between the three are more based on their historical usage, uh, regional terminology, and design more than anything. Sideboards, buffets, credenza, whatever you want to call them, they're really all kind of the same thing, and for whatever reason, they really seem to look great under a wall-mounted TV. And so that's what I'm building here, a media center that I'm calling a sideboard. My wife wanted a modern-looking sideboard to replace our current credenza. We designed it to have three long center drawers flanked on either side with a pair of doors. She settled on a mid-century design with short turned legs, and I settled on adding decorative beading around the drawers and doors to add a slight traditional period feel. We wanted the doors and drawers to be inset into the carcass frame and incorporate soft closed door hinges and full extension undermount drawer slides. We both settled on walnut as the wood species and I started off by milling four quarter walnut for the carcass top, bottom, sides, and vertical dividers. After gluing up the main panels for the carcass, I cross cut the top, bottom, sides, and dividers to final length. I then machined the mortises for domino beach tenons. Here you can see that I'm using a reference line along the top and bottom carcass panel to align the vertical dividers. During the test fit, you'll notice that the middle vertical dividers are slightly shorter than the top and the bottom, and that's to allow for the half inch cabinet back. Next, I started working on the drawer dividers. I decided to construct the drawer dividers as a web frame made from 3 inch strips of maple plywood, kind of like rails and styles to a frame and panel door. I also added a strip of solid walnut nosing along the front rail of the drawer dividers. Now to allow for expansion and contraction of the solid walnut carcass independent of the drawer dividers, I purposely undersized the styles and made sure to not apply any glue along that back rail. The dominoes properly aligned the back rail along its width while still allowing it to move forward and back along the length of the domino. I then only mortised the ends of the front and back rail to the center vertical dividers and not the styles. Therefore, the front and back of the drawer dividers are rigidly constrained to the vertical dividers. However, that lack of glue along the back rail and undersizing the styles allows for the front and back of the drawer dividers to actually move in conjunction with the rest of the carcass. The 6 inch long legs were turned on the lathe as a 26 inch long blank. I simply made sure my tool rest was parallel to the leg blank and went to town using a roughing gouge. Once I got close to the one and a half inch diameter, I finished off by sanding. Now I'm not a good turner by any means, so I felt more comfortable cross cutting the legs to final length and then machining a one inch tenon on the end of the legs using my cross cut sled and a flat grind blade. I know that turning a tenon would probably be faster, but I don't have the confidence in my consistency with the lathe and I haven't had enough practice, so I do it this way. The leg tenons will get wedged into a support block that will attach to the bottom of the carcass. This introduces another cross grain situation. To accommodate for wood movement, I routed out an elongated counterboard hole along the back of the support. You can see that the furniture bolts have plenty of room to allow for wood movement once secured to threaded inserts within the carcass. Whereas the front of the support gets a regular counterboard through hole and is expected to remain stationary. While I was at the drill press, I also drilled out the mortises for the legs and a strain relief for the tenon wedge. I then went to the bandsaw and created a saw kerf for the tenon wedge, 
and cut out the wedges I needed using a plywood jig. Once I located where I wanted the legs and support block to be mounted on the bottom of the carcass, I bore holes to accept threaded inserts. I just apply a little bit of epoxy and drive them in with an impact driver. The back of the sideboard is made of solid walnut and is essentially the same as a tongue and groove frame and panel door. There are a pair of rails and a pair of styles that are glued together to make the frame and within that frame are multiple undersized slats that are designed to float within the groove of the frame. To machine the groove in the back slat, I ran stock through a flat grind blade along its edge, making sure to rotate the board 180 degrees during the second pass to ensure the groove is centered along the edge of the board. Having proper feather boards and work holding makes me feel comfortable that the workpiece won't kick back on me. Now to machine the tongue, I use a dado set and an L fence. I first take a pass on each face of the ends and then take a pass on either edge of the board. This gives me a perfectly centered tongue and groove joint. I made the cabinet back removable. It is attached to the sideboard using screws through rectangular cleats that are nailed and glued to the top and bottom of the sideboard. After I pre-drilled the cleats, I used a spacer block the thickness of the cabinet back to set the cleats. Some quick set wood glue and pin nails help secure the cleats to the top and bottom of the sideboard. And while I had everything laid out on the assembly table, I went ahead and drilled shelf pin holes in each of the cabinet compartments. Next, I started working on the three drawers by milling basswood down to 5 eighths of an inch thick. Since I'm using undermount drawer slides, the dimensions are dictated by the drawer opening and the fact that I'm using domino tenons for joinery. I then add a groove to accept quarter inch UV finish plywood for the drawer bottoms. And I cut a notch at the bottom corners of the drawer back for the undermount drawer slides to slip through. I pre-finished the drawers with Minwax's spray lacquer for its quick dry time, easy application, and no need for sanding in between coats. After sanding the drawers to 220 grit, I sprayed a coat, waited approximately 30 minutes, and applied a second coat. The basswood drawers are just not the highlight of this piece, so a quick and easy protective coat is all I'm looking for. I think that one of the major benefits to pre-finishing is having an easier cleanup of glue squeeze out during assembly. The doors and drawer fronts are made of Baltic birch plywood cores that are cladded with 3 seconds of an inch thick shop sawn walnut veneer. I first resawed stock down to an eighth of an inch and then sand it down to 3 seconds of an inch at the drum sander. To join multiple veneer strips, I stretched blue painter's tape tightly across the jointed edge and applied wood glue using a folding technique. I then stretched blue painter's tape tightly across the jointed edge on the back of the veneer and then let that cure. To attach the veneer to the Baltic birch ply, I used plastic powdered resin glue which creates a very rigid glue line this is ideal for thicker shops on veneer. Whenever I'm veneering a panel, I have a backer veneer to balance the show-faced veneer. I made a veneer panel sandwich when placing multiple panels in a vacuum bag by using wax paper in between each of the panels so that the glue doesn't stick the individual panels together. Once in the bag, I let the glue cure overnight before taking the doors and drawer fronts out of the bag. The beading around the doors and drawer fronts is made using a 3 8 inch beading bit chucked into the router table. Once the beading profile is machined, I ripped the beading on the table saw. I then mitered the beading using a 45 degree bench hook and a pull saw. And then shot the ends of the miter using a 45 degree shooting board and miter plane. I used hide glue to attach the beading for its long open time while tacking up fairly quickly. Finally, I used pin nails to clamp the beading in place while the glue cures. I sealed and protected this piece using a 50-50 blend of Minwax's oil-based polyurethane and mineral spirits. This is essentially a shop-made wiping polyurethane. 
I wanted an easy to apply finish that could be polished and buffed out to a perfectly smooth surface. To apply the wiping poly, I'm using folded up cheesecloth. Once the cloth is saturated but not dripping, I wipe on the poly making sure to go with the grain in long, even strokes. I allow each coat 4 hours to dry before sanding off any dust nibs or imperfections in the finish. For the abrasive, I used double lot steel wool in between coats making sure not to sand through the subsequent coat of finish. I build up about 6 coats of finish and allow about a week for the finish to fully cure before I begin glue up and assembly. I first start assembly by attaching the turned legs to the support blocks. I drive a walnut wedge into the saw kerf within the tenon until it bottoms out. I then flush trim the excess. I then attach the drawer dividers to the center vertical dividers. Here you can see the two pairs of domino tenons attaching the front and back rail. And it may be hard to see, but there is a slight gap between the back rail and the style to allow for wood movement. I then attach the center drawer assembly and sides to the carcass top and the bottom. Finally, I attach the legs to the carcass bottom, stand up the piece on the legs, and allow it to cook in the clamps overnight. To attach the undermount drawer slides, I recess the front of the drawer slides to accommodate for the inset drawer fronts. I pre-drill with a 5mm self-centering bit and then drive in three 5mm high point euro screws. For the drawers to accept the drawer slides, I need to drill a quarter inch hole along the drawer back to accommodate for the locator pin on the drawer slides. I also screw on the drawer clips that lock the drawer slides to the drawer frame. Next, I bore the 35mm holes into the door panels for the Euro cup hinges using a Craig cup hinge drilling guide. The Craig jig also has a pair of 1 16th inch drill hole guides to pre-drill for the mounting screws. To mate with the hinges, a pair of mounting brackets are attached to the carcass sides with a pair of number 6 5 8 inch long screws. A hole along the corner of the door is drilled out to allow for some antique brass knobs. I added a ball catch to the door as a detent stop once the door is fully closed. Again, I locate the hole using a self-centering bit and then drive in some screws to secure the catches. It was difficult to film the installation of the ball catch within the carcass, but I think you understand how the ball catch was attached. To center the drawer fronts and to get a nice even 3 seconds of an inch reveal, I used shims and then drove wood screws through the drawer knob locations to temporarily hold the drawer front in place. I then remove the entire drawer assembly, pre-drill, and drive in four screws through the back to secure the drawer front. With the drawer fronts attached, I then drill all the way through the pre-drilled holes and attach the drawer knobs. The final step to a great finish is to buff out and polish the film finish that you've built up using Minwax's furniture paste wax applied with 4 aught synthetic steel wool. A hand rubbed finish allows you to quickly remove the last bit of dust nibs that are on the surface. Rubbing out a finish also leaves a much more uniform sheen. And lastly, Rubbing out a finish makes your piece feel ultra smooth. To do this, you simply charge your synthetic steel wool with a bit of furniture wax. The wax acts as a lubricant for the rubbing process and helps create a more consistent looking surface than dry steel wool. I like to use long strokes and a good amount of pressure. Once I feel like I've thoroughly smoothed out the surface, I wipe away all of the remaining wax with shop towels making sure to leave nothing behind. And now the moment you've been waiting for, installation day. Once the cabinet back is placed against the cleats, I use one inch screws to attach the back to the carcass. 
I then attach the doors to the mounting brackets within the carcass. And finally, clip the drawers into place. Thanks for watching.